Hello everybody, my name is Balaj Knight from the Robotics and Perception Group at the University of Zurich. I'm presenting our work about a graphics processing unit or GPU accelerated content for high-speed visual inertial audiometry. So what is the motivation behind our work? There are so many sensors today that one can buy and that provide you a lot of data. You can get cameras, both rolling shutter and global shutter that provide more than 100 frames per second. And you can also buy inertial measurements units or IMUs that have over a kilohertz refresh rate. We want to process all this data on an embedded computer, but there's certainly some gap or disconnect between what these sensors can give you and what you can process. That is, there's a throughput limitation. Some of the acquired or potentially acquirable data will be dropped. On the other hand, some applications are latency limited. There are some use cases where latency is important, for instance, drone racing. Let's imagine that you're flying a few meters per second, and for path planning, you need the next state estimate. Okay, sure, you could run an optimizer for thousands of iterations and get the perfect pose, but what this will give you is that you hit the wall. Instead, maybe you are better off with a state estimate that is less accurate, but timely. Our goal in this work is to reduce the VIO frame processing times by exploiting some efficient, low-level GPU hardware-specific instructions and introducing a CPU-GPU work sharing. By lowering the individual frame processing times, we can simultaneously minimize latency and reduce the neglected visual inertia information. Improved latency often leads to improved throughput, and sometimes improved throughput also leads to improved latency. We specifically address our problems using NVIDIA's proprietary parallel computing platform and programming model CUDA. What is the main idea? Many papers show that you don't need all, but only a well-distributed set of features for VIO. This means that even though we can extract hundreds of features from a single image, we are only interested in the ones that are locally prominent. Therefore, we need to be able to extract these features and then track them efficiently. To achieve this, we need to introduce a computational pattern on the GPU, such that we solve for a reduced number of output elements in parallel from the input image. What we'll do here is that each feature is going to be computed by multiple threads. This applies both for feature tracking and feature detection. First, we revisit the problem of non-maxima suppression. Then we apply our non-maxima suppression approach in feature detection. We bring our idea of collaboration to feature tracking then. And lastly, we combine our GPU feature tracker frontend with the CPU-only VIO backend. Before we jump into addressing each step, maybe it is worth talking about how we can perform reduction on a GPU. By reduction, we mean combining a higher number of individual computations into fewer outputs. The reduction will happen via synchronized communication. Just as a quick refresher, on the left side, I show a simplified GPU structure, while on the right side, we have the execution hierarchy within CUDA. The smallest unit of execution is a thread. 32 threads are grouped together into warps. A group of warps form a thread block, and lastly, the thread grid consists of one or more thread blocks. For each level of execution, we would like to use the medium in which it is the most efficient to perform reduction. We go from outside to inside. Thread blocks may reduce their computation in global memory. This is the slowest amongst all because we turn to an off-chip memory. Warps with the same thread block can use shared memory, which is significantly faster. However, threads within the same warp can read each other's registers with so-called shuffle instructions. And this is the fastest. Our reduction is going to be optimal if we always strive for the fastest medium in the current computational unit. Non-maximum suppression is a local maximum search within each candidate points more neighborhood. It is part of every major feature detection algorithm used today. In high level, what happens is that you first create multiple scales of your image, and within each scale, you calculate a corner response function. For the corner response, you apply the non-maximum suppression, and the remaining points are either kept or discarded based on some further criteria. We augmented the original algorithm. We similarly calculate the corner response, but then apply a grid. We only want to extract one feature per grid cell, but still applying a 3x3 or 5x5 venue around the non-zero responses. We impose some restrictions on the grid cell sizes to align it with the GPU hardware available. That is, its width needs to be a multiple of 32, while its height needs to be a multiple of a power of 2. On the right, we show a single cell. Multiple warps process a single cell, and each warp processes multiple lines. Each thread processes a single pixel at a time. An example cell processing is shown on the right. 
In this example, four VORPs process a single cell. Once the VORPs iterate through the cell lines, each VORP has potentially 32 maximum points. Therefore, two reductions shall take place a reduction within the warps and a reduction within the thread block. The reduction within the warp happens through register to register reads, whereas the thread block reduction happens through shared memory. Once the reductions finish, we get our final features in each cell. Our solution selects local response maxima, imposes facial distribution, and extracts features simultaneously. We have our features extracted. Now we want to track them. The Lucas Canada tracker became prevalent in visual inertia odometry due to its efficiency and robustness. The algorithm solves an optimization problem for each feature patch by minimizing an intensity difference between a template and the current incoming frame. GPA implementations of this algorithm appeared early on, but they were mainly optimized for tackling a high number of features. But we've seen that we just need a well-distributed set of features. Our approach builds on threat collaboration, but what does this mean? The optimization problem can be solved with a Gauss-Newton algorithm in which we perform consecutive iterations. In each iteration, the update term will be calculated from the pixel intensity differences between the current frame and the template patch. We process a feature patch with an entire warp in which the threads can calculate the pixel intensity differences simultaneously. Each thread knows the current estimate and also knows which pixels it needs to process. But after the patch has been fully processed, they need to synchronize and sum up the differences they calculated. Yet again, we perform a warp reduction with register to register reads, but in contrast to the non-maximum suppression, now all threads receive the result of the common sum. We performed our experiments on an NVIDIA Jetson PX2 embedded computer and a regular notebook. The PX2 delivers an excellent trade-off between size and computational performance, whereas the 960M is an older mid-range dedicated GPU in a notebook computer. We want to highlight that the two systems exhibit a highly different CUDA core count and different memory bandwidths. We also have to note that in case of the TX2, the available memory bandwidth is shared between the CPU cluster and the GPU itself. We combined our known maximum suppression method with a highly optimized fast corner response function. FAST is the epitome of feature detectors in VIO since it can be used on embedded platforms with low latency, yet it provides a reasonable set of features. Over time, FAST was published with three different types of scores, to which we'll refer to as set A, sum of absolute differences on the continuous arc, set B, sum of absolute differences on the entire Bresham circle, and MT, maximum threshold for which the point is still considered a corner point. We verified the conformity of our implementation with the original FAST feature detector written for standard processors. We ran our implementation and checked whether all of our outputs are also present in the output of the CPU implementation. Due to the applied grid, we only output a subset of features, but this subset must correspond to features in the original detection. In the images shown, red circles represent features from the original detector, yellow, which are output from both implementations, and blue, that are false positive from our detector. Note that there are no false positives here. We compared our feature detection time with other publicly available FAST implementations. As the publicly available detectors only support single scale, we performed these experiments using the original image resolution found in the machine whole dataset. We outperformed all in terms of execution time, and additionally, we also imposed spatial distribution. We also broke down the execution time of our implementation using two pyramid levels. This comparison clearly shows the embedded processor's disadvantage in terms of memory performance. Although it is admittedly hard to compare two feature trackers due to the numerous configuration parameters and implementation variations, we did a comparison of ours and the publicly available one. In both cases, we use fast features with the score which is defined over the continuous arc and use two pyramid levels. As you don't want to run out of features to track, we always trigger it read detection at 30%. In a second evaluation, we only focused on our implementation and timed it while changing the track feature count we kept the read detection rate at 30%. What clearly shows is that by introducing an additional intensity parameter to be estimated, the average convergence time decreases, which results in a decreased execution time. However, when the two affine illumination parameters are estimated simultaneously with the translation-only displacement model, the convergence time increases, and this inherently affects the execution time. We started our presentation with a goal. 
In a visual inertial odometry pipeline, we want to reduce the time spent on each frame so that we can minimize our latency. And additionally, if the sensors provide more data than we could process initially, we could also process that. Therefore, in our last experiment, we combined our GPU feature detector and feature tracker with a highly optimized CP-only bundle adjustment backend. We chose ISB as backend since it is accurate, efficient, and also achieves unparalleled execution times. As a first experiment, we evaluated their proposed frontend to give us a baseline, then we replaced it with our GPU accelerated frontend. Both frontends use fast features and the Locus Canada feature tracker with 7 detect features. From the numerous bundle adjustment parameters, we lowered the lo local bundle adjustment window size from the original 50 to 15 in both the original baselines and OR timings. This was necessary as the local bundle adjustment is executed after each frame and influences the overall pipeline's latency, whereas the global bundle adjustment can run in parallel without significantly influencing the frame-to-frame -frame processing times. The results show an average speedup of over 2 with an average accuracy loss of half percent in relative translation error. Our front-end's tracking performance seems inferior on the last two machine hole sequences. However, according to a previously published objective comparison on VIO pipelines, most systems exhibit increased tracking error on these two sequences. In conclusion, introduced a non-maxima suppression method that is built around low-level GPU-specific instruction primitives. We showcased its performance using the fast feature detector. We specialized a Lucas Canada tracker with feature to warp allocation that exhibits faster execution times than regular trackers in VIO scenarios. We also combined our front-end with a highly optimized back-end and demonstrated superior execution times with high accuracy. And with that, we've come to the end of this presentation. Thank you for your attention.